Hello again, I'm Neil Clark and uh, this is the second part of the lecture on gene set enrichment analysis. In the second and last part, we will take an extremely simple data set and use it to show you how gene set enrichment analysis works in a simplified way. Let's start by imagining that we have microarray samples from muscle biopsies from patients with and without diabetes. And from the expression levels of the genes, we want to gain some kind of biological insight into diabetes. We shall use the toy data, it's not from a real microarray, shown in the first two tables here. For each of the five genes, labeled A to E, we have two samples from patients with and two samples from patients without diabetes. The first step is to rank the genes according to their differential expression as shown in the table below. One extremely simple way to do this is to generate a number for each gene equal to its mean fold change across the classes and then rank the genes by this number such that the genes whose expression is elevated in B with respect to A are at the top and the genes whose expression is elevated in A with respect to B are at the bottom. Now we're going to take a set of genes. Let's say gene B and gene C. And we're going to ask the question, collectively, are these two genes significantly differentially expressed? We're going to do this by taking a walk down our rank list of genes. Every time we encounter a gene which is in our set, we will take a step to the right. And every time we encounter a gene which is not in our set, we will take to a step to our left. This is similar to the kind of random walks we were doing in part one. Now, we would like our walk to be like the Brownian bridge as used in the Kolmogorov smirnov test. But as there will typically, typically be many more genes not in our set as there are in our set, the number of steps to the left and right will not be really equal and our Brownian bridge will not be complete. So we rescale the relative sizes of the left and right steps. One very simple way to do this is to take the left step shown in the first term in this slide, where G is the number of genes in the test set and N is the number of genes in the microarray chip, and if we take the right step of the size shown in the term below, then we are sure to return back to zero in the course of our walk down the ranked list. Note that the gene set enrichment analysis method has evolved and there are now more sophisticated ways of doing this, which take gene correlations into account. But this is good enough for us here to illustrate the basic principles of gene set enrichment analysis. If we go back to our ranked gene list for our example data and perform this walk, we see what is shown in the figure here. Now, if the genes are collectively upregulated, we would expect them to be mostly near the top of the list. And then when we do our walk, we will preferentially hit genes which are in our set. And our walk will make lots of steps to the right early in the walk and stray very far from zero. If the genes in our test set are collectively downregulated, then we would expect to make lots of steps to the left before recovering back to zero. And so we would expect to stray very far from zero in the other direction. If our gene set is not collectively differentially expressed at all, then we would expect our walk to be like a Brownian bridge, not straying very far from zero. We will take the maximum distance from zero to be a measure of the collective differential expression of the gene set. This is often referred to as the enrichment score. But before we can proceed, we need to know how likely we were to have obtained this maximum just by random scatter, just by chance, under the null hypothesis that there is no real difference, differential expression. In order to make a null distribution of maximum distances, we permute the data by randomly swapping the class labels. Note that we do not swap the gene labels. By swapping the class labels, we destroy any information about the classes while preserving the correlation structure between the genes. Having randomly commuted the data, we repeat the process we just went through. We rank the genes according to their differential expression and perform the walk. A few walks for different random perturbations of the data are shown in the top figure here. The distribution of walks provides us with a distribution of maximum distances to which we can compare the value we observe for our unmuted data. We can assign a p-value based on the fraction of random scores which are greater than or equal to our actual score. If, say, only five or fewer out of 1,000 have a score at least as large 
If, say, only 10 or fewer out of 1,000 have a score at least as large as the observed value, then we would say that the gene set is significantly collectively differentially expressed. In gene set enrichment analysis, we usually test many gene sets, so the final step is to correct for multiple hypothesis testing. Here is a figure taken from one of the original papers which proposed the very popular method of gene set enrichment analysis. The reference is shown below. The figure illustrates the main elements when applied to a microarray with a realistic number of genes. The heat map in A shows the genes ranked according to their differential expression across the phenotype class, which might be diseased or non-diseased, for example. Just to the right of that is a part of the figure that looks like a barcode. Here the authors have indicated the positions of the genes in the test set in the ranked list with a black horizontal line. This is replicated horizontally on the right with an illustration of the walk down the ranked list. In this example, it seems as though the gene set is collectively upregulated. Finally, we'll take a look at another of the original papers proposing this method and how it was applied in a real situation to gain insight into the biology of a disease. The reference for this example is shown in the first line of this slide. The authors compared gene expression measurements from patients with normal glucose tolerance impaired glucose tolerance, and type 2 diabetes. The authors examined a large library of gene sets using gene set enrichment analysis to identify genes associated with oxidative phosphorylation to be significantly differentially expressed. We should note that the individual genes in the set were not greatly differentially expressed, but there was a consistent small level of differential expression throughout the set which stood out as statistically significant. The authors were then able to validate their method by performing experiments which were able to confirm the role of oxidative phosphorylation in type 2 diabetes. If you want to perform gene set enrichment analysis on your own data, then the easiest way to do this is to download the software from the gene set enrichment analysis website. So in summary, gene set enrichment analysis is a method of approaching gene expression data which aims to uh, alleviate two of the problems of looking at gene expression data on a gene by gene basis. This is done by, instead of looking for the differential expression of individual genes, we look for uh, the collective differential expression of whole groups of genes. This has two advantages. Firstly, it improves statistical power. Small but consistent uh, differential expressions uh, across the set stand out uh, more clearly above the noise. And also, the interpretation of the results are built in, as each of the gene sets has a common um, biological theme, then the interpretation is, is built in.